guys, welcome back to my studio. I'm Karen Zima. Today we're going to be working on another portrait. And this one is rather lovely. She has like a country feel to her with her braid. And the background is very abstract and textured. Kind of the way I like to mix uh, my portraits a little bit of abstract with reality and come up with texture and movement, and mood, lighting, all that stuff. So, let's get started on this one. I can't wait to get going and show you all my tips and tricks. If I can do it, you can do it. Stay tuned, I'll show you how I created this. Now, some of the colors I put out for this particular portrait, and for most of my portraits I usually use the same colors. I have a white, a cerulean blue, a raw sienna, now that's a burnt sienna, a yellow ochre, uh, the phthalo blue, and I have a beige tone, a cadmium yellow, a cadmium red, an orange, a lilac, and like a flesh tone, and a brown in the center. Those are all the colors that we're going to try and put in the flesh tones as we proceed here. And I just put out like a bunch of brushes, but as I use them, I will let you know which one I'm using at the time. Now, we've started, I already sketched it out. Now, I know a lot of people find sketching on canvas a little hard, like especially with a pencil. It's really hard with a pencil, so I use charcoal. Just a little light charcoal stick and it goes on really well and then when you paint over it just falls away and blends out. So in this painting, let's say we are going to, uh, well first of all, this is a 24 by 30 inch canvas. It's my usual size that I paint on. I Sometimes I paint smaller and sometimes larger, but uh, for the most part, I love this size canvas. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is try and get as much emotion into this as we can. Now she already looks kind of emotional by the direction of her eyes. It's like, where is she looking? What's she looking at? What's she thinking? And we can also get emotion from her body pose. She's playing with her hair almost like she's nervous or like usually when you play with your hair you could be nervous or fidgety. So that's her body pose and that adds to the mystery of the painting and the portrait. So let's get started here. Okay. I'm just going to lay in a very light watery pink. Now I know like painting portraits, it's all about, it's a preference of what colors. I mean, she could be like a pink skin or more green tones, blue tones, red tones, yellow tones, all kind of tones go in in a portrait. So what we're going to do is just let this dry. It's just a very fine, light coat of a fleshy pink. to lay color down and let it dry, sort of like an underpainting. You just lay it in quickly, you don't have to take your time. Because I go for texture and brush strokes to, you know, kind of add to the whole depth of the painting. And you try and get texture any way you can. Okay. Now, move down to the neck area and put in some more pink tones. And I'm kind of moving along pretty quickly because that's the way I paint. I paint fast and furious. Not furious, but fast. Let's just say fast. And I just like to get the first coat down so um, it can dry 
and we can start putting layers on top. Because I love to work in layers. Layers and layers and layers. And she's relatively young girl. She looks uh, maybe early 20s, if not younger. And like blue tones, uh, can, you can usually, say you have it too orange or something, you can tone your painting down with some blue tones and it won't look so orangey, not unless that's the look you're going for. that in around her eyeball. 
might be a little bit too dark, but we will fix that up in a second. Okay. Now I think I'm going to make her eyes like a brownish blue. So we take that uh, brown color, put in some ultramarine, and we get this nice color here, maybe a little lighter cerulean in there.
my palette and put out all new colors from where I left off and I think we're going to start with the background and keep putting in tones of black, brown maybe. Uh, we'll put some tones in there and then I think we'll start with her dress and maybe this arm, that arm and then we'll work on her face a little later, save it for last. We'll pull out details and we'll get her hair. So some of the colors I put out refreshed my palette. A light pink, a candy pink, there's like a flesh color, a white, a black, a gray, baby blue, there's pathalo blue, there's like a light yellow, a pumpkin orange, a burnt sienna, and a raw umber. So those are some of the colors that we I'm going to start with as we proceed along. Now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to get some black. I think I'm going to wet this again. Okay, that will help blend it in. Okay, I'm going to take the black I put out. And I'm going to mix this pathalo. Pathalo blue in with it. It's like this blue black. And we're going to go over, put another coat on. And that will give it uh, more depth, not so sort of see through. And this blue, bluish black color will look a lot better with our hair tones because she's going to have like reddish tinted hair and I think it'll go nice because blues and greens go so well with uh, red hair. Yes, I said they'll go with blonde but uh, I think she's going to be redhead. She could change to blonde at the last minute. I do stuff like that and this is uh, Kind of easy to create this. It didn't take me long at all, but of course I'm not nearly finished. And the way I work is lots and lots of layers. Layers and layers and layers. It shows, gives it depth. And of course I'm going to widen her body because I think she looks just a little too thin. I mean, everybody would like to be that thin, but uh, it's not healthy. So I'm going to plump her up a little. Here we, uh, well, let me start working on her dress. I will plump her up. Plump her up. You know, that's a uh, more intense, more intense colors in here. I'm just going to go ahead and get some phthalo blue. Actually, I'm going to put some more out. It's like one of my favorite colors. That and Viridian Green, phthalo Green. For some reason, I don't know, I like the intensity of them. Okay, so. Put the yellow out. Let's just go ahead and randomly and abstractly put in some texture. And then we'll let that dry and maybe come back and put in more tones and work on it some more. Nothing's ever finished. What we're going to do, I think, is maybe the easiest thing to do next would be this arm because it's not going to have a lot of tones or shadows or much of anything going on there. So we'll start with like this beige color. 
put a little pink in it, break it up.
on her arm here. And just put in like a pink tone for now. It is going to be the base, base coat here. clean used done finished pretty porous and interesting to use as a you know, to get texture so what I did was I took every color on my palette you know got a little bit on each and just dabbed now I'm going to finish it off it didn't have any blue so Every color in the painting is in this background. And it's a very nice texturized uh, pattern. People wonder, probably wonder, like, how does a person do that? But this is how. brings the whole painting together, like all the colors. And if you have too much blue, say, in one spot, you don't like it, just grab another color and go over it. some of my styles and techniques and create one of your own and 
possibly send it to me because I'd love to see them. I'd love to see what you came up with. So just keep on practicing. The more you practice, the better you get. Until next time. Bye-bye.